Good evening and welcome to tonight's stream. Um hmm. one, two, three. Yeah, just checking I was in sync. It rather looked like I wasn't. That's the dark blue. Which I wanted to do some areas of down there. So we will do, whilst I've got it in the tool, oh I wanted to do over here as well. <clears throat> so we'll do over there first, around this buffer area. Oh and down here, okay. Reaper 7, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Nice to see you again. And how are you doing today? Ah, you did some paper craft. Well done. He, did you? What was it? You decided on doing the um, that uh, cat from last night, or was it something else? <laughs> That's what tweezers are for. <laughs> tweezers or pliers might help. Just take your time. There's no um, <coughs> there's no heavy for doing it. So the um, yeah, take your time, enjoy it. If it's getting frustrating, then uh, just take a deep breath, get a drink of water, come back to it later.
그림들이 네. 자, I've just um, just checking. I've got a sacrificial PC, uh, well, laptop just to to the left of me, which is doing its um, uh, bringing Windows up to date before I back it up, and then I'm going to try and install Windows 10 on it and um, see how that goes. Um, I was going to. Um, do the reserve copy thing on my own PC but I install I updated the Windows drivers and it now doesn't give me the option um, so if, uh, I'm gonna have to if I want to run it on the main PC I'm gonna have to download it uh, manually and um, install it from uh, from media but have you tried it yet uh, fear reaper Windows 10 it's supposed to be very good Not yet. Oh, okay. Don't quite know whether to trust it or not, but um, all the main applications seem to be um, updated, uh, or, or the ones that I want to use seem to be compatible. So. It does seem to be getting rather good reviews, which is kind of even more surprising for uh, for Windows OS, which usually they usually get slated. And I've got what one, two, three, another three or four PCs to do so. I kind of want to know it works okay before I do any of them. Oh, yes, he's on stream. I hope you're going to um, take a photograph and show us the final uh, final item when you've uh, completed that uh, paper craft for your Reaper. Of course, if you don't want it, that's okay as well. Don't feel like you have to, by the way. I've been Windows 7, 8, well, 7, 7 and 8.1, and I think I've got, I uh, can't remember if the other machine's got XP or Windows 7 on it, probably Windows 7, I suspect. Such a long time since I fired that laptop up. Um, probably intend, well, I do intend at some point to run Linux on that, but uh, if you ever finish it, is it as bad as that? You wish I had an A3 printer. <laughs> oh, 
And I've got an A2 one sat here, which I don't use very often. Uh, I got it so I could do my own um, prints from electronic um, art, but uh, I've done a few, but uh, I've not actually done much in the way of electronic art that's worth printing out. So. Hopefully I'll uh, I'll get around one of these days to doing some more. So how long do you think it will it would actually take you to complete that model then, uh, Free Reaper? It's surprising how long they take some things, isn't it? I was just thinking then, though, um, if you really need it uh, uh, bigger, and I'm assuming that the biggest piece is sort of full size of an A4 sheet, there's um, nothing really to stop you um, drawing your own out on a bigger sheet of paper. It won't be coloured, true, but um, then you get to use some of your art skills as well. Of course, I admit it's probably easier for me because I can either use a projector or... Um, what's that? Just thinking of a way in which you can sort of project things, but you can either use a projector or... Um, I, I did some training for sort of uh, technical drawings so uh, I, I sort of can copy things fairly easily um, but a couple of if you need to draw something big if you haven't thought about it a couple of things is um, uh, you can always make it smaller and then use um, shadow enlargement so basically hold a piece at a fixed um, fixed height above something else with a light bulb above it and you'll get a shadow which is enlarged <coughs> or um, it's relatively easy to make um, I was about to say a pantograph but I can't actually remember what it's called uh, sort of a it's a panta something um, which is useful for um, making enlargement everything with small corners and tabs mm. I can see that. I can see that quite easily. I'd probably resort to a sharp scalpel at that point or a razor blade, but um, uh, is Twitch twitching? It looks like it. It looks like I've lost my uh, feedback window. Reload that screen. No, you're not going to. Okay, at this point in time, I don't actually know if anything is going on. Oh, looks like it's finally reconnecting. Uh, razor blade, Free Reaper. I mean, they're fairly. Uh, should be fairly easy sort of thing to uh, to find. Or um, steal a safety razor and break it apart. Um, that's kind of another way. Uh, they're sort of a fairly cheap way of getting hold of, <laughs> hold of a razor blade. Um, they're quite uh, small as well.
I've done that a few times when I've wanted uh, wanted a very sharp blade to um, to do some sort of things with balsa wood. When I used to make models, I'd um, I'd rip apart a uh, an old safety razor. Just for the minute then I thought, uh, a thought just crossed my mind that maybe the stream broke because I got transcode but uh, no such luck, <laughs> not that biggie. Okay so that's the other side of the uh, other side of the, the locomotive, the same, the same section but on the other side. Um, now I was going to do some sections down here with this dark blue while I have it in the uh, in the pen. Yeah, it's it's almost as though Twitch Twitch has accepted the ingest without a problem. It's almost as though it just stopped all the output streams. Um, my, um, I, I watched my own stream coming back and uh, it crashed basically a minute ago. I've just seen um, that it looks like Twitch has just notified out again that I've just gone live, which is kind of irritating because that means another tweet's gone out, but uh, what the heck, it's a reminder. <laughs> so it looks like they're having problems again. Why is this not sounding unusual?
doing this bit here because um, based on the reference pictures I've got with light this is kind of slightly shadowed so I'm mainly looking at a couple of reference pictures which um, have the loco in this same sort of position with with sunlight sort of from the top right as it would be on the face side and uh, which means that this is so this side is slightly shady just around here plus of course as I say before I've got the problem of um, I haven't got too many shades of color so I'm using artistic license and shadowing <laughs> to um, to mean I can minimize the use of color and I can put details in that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do like this uh, this section of the body stay slightly proud of the line there because I think what I might do is um, use white in this area around here uh, and possibly over on the top here just because it's so uh, you know to, to sort of represent a very bright reflection So I want a transition between the dark blue and a light blue on the corner or this blue on the corner before it moves into the white. <laughs> you had me wondering then, uh, Phoebe, but I was thinking, what's this mistake that I've made? <laughs> Well, don't you have to use a reasonably thick uh, paper for it to be self-supporting? Uh, self I mean, if you use sort of 80 gram paper, I can imagine the whole thing just sagging in the middle. I just thought it would need to be reasonably thick. Um, and possibly that, that might actually help in that... Um, it enables you sort of to hold one end of a piece of paper a bit easier than trying to get right into sort of like a, where a tab is or something like that.
Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, something I'm not familiar with, so I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of lot of engineering, I guess, goes into it. Um, I'm just thinking then as you make uh, you know you make um, 3d models electronic 3d models um, something like papercraft actually could be extremely useful in sort of understanding how models like that go together uh, I've got a thread which is sticking out there of a loop so when you get that happening and it does sometimes happen where as you're pushing the needle through it'll it'll catch on an existing loop and push it out a bit more all we do is just snip off the ends like that and uh, then uh, okay it's not a loop anymore but you can't tell so that's most of the dark blue I think it's probably worth putting in the silver and black here um, before we go any further with this so it'll be it'll be gray actually I might put some gray in down here as well rather than white and then transition to white just up here which feels like a good idea so I'll do that cotton change time Grey, silver. You are going to go through there, Thread. You definitely are. Even if I to spend the rest of tonight trying to get you through, you are going to go through that loop. No, not down the barrel. Through the loop. There you go, I told you. No point in fighting me. Fluffy Twiglet! Good evening, welcome to the stream. Sorry, I wasn't wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at me trying trying to save Puffy. <laughs> I seem to get um, a little bit tongue-tied with the Puffy bit. Fluffy wouldn't be a problem, but Puffy, for some reason, is quite difficult to say. Right, let's see if I can spell Mallard. Well, I can spell Mallard, but let's see if I can do it with um, this thread.
Well, I don't think what I've just done bears any resemblance to the word actually mallard, but um, hopefully it'll look like this, like uh, writing. Well, I've got something in there. And now if I turn this over, that will look like just a silver blob. But um, it might look a little bit different when I put a bit of black in. There again, it might not. We shall see. Now then, I was going to do some silver just around this area here. Uh, probably transition to white somewhere around there. So...
some reason whilst I'm doing this I always feel really peaceful <laughs> Uh, it has quite a calming effect. Don't quite know what it is about it that does that, but um, it's not like I'm sort of imagining that this is a person or something like that that I'm jabbing with the needle because I'm not. It's uh, It takes a reasonable amount of concentration to keep uh, uh, to keep each uh, loop the same distance from each other. Although that's fantastically important, but it does uh, it does help. I mean, all all that's really necessary is just to make sure you get a reasonably dense coverage. But uh, that's made a bit easier if you can sort of keep the uh, the loops sort of one needle space apart. It isn't for you, Reaper, why is that? What's going on that makes it less than peaceful? I mean, I'm lucky, there's no noise outside. I've got an air conditioning running behind me, so it's not uh, it's not really silent in here either, but... Um, I sometimes find um, silence to be really distracting. I quite often, uh, especially if I'm concentrating on something, actually like some sort of sound or disturbance going on. Uh, whilst, uh, when I used to do a lot of uh, coding at home, I used to put uh, an audio book on. And uh, half the time I wouldn't actually hear the story, but um, it it um, it helped me to concentrate because I wasn't being distracted by little noises. I'll switch that. Well, I'll, uh, I was going to say I'll switch this thread out, but I actually want to do some more just up here on the uh, on the chimney or the smokestack. Ah, uh, oh, I see what you mean. And <laughs> um, no, for Fluffy Twiggler, we've been uh, we've been quite. Um, Lucky so far, or are you offering? <laughs> you are you offering to provide Fear Reaper with some practice? <laughs> uh, I'm going to do 
little black on the front so we're going to transition to a dark grey then to a light grey somewhere around here um, and then probably into a white so One thing I learnt, um, ow! One thing I've learned is not to jab yourself with a needle. Um, one thing I've learnt quite recently about these um, these locomotives is uh, the stuff you see coming out the chimney here. Um, if it's dark, it's smoke. If it's light, it's steam. Because they exhaust both up through the uh, the stack and it's in actual fact the fact it is in it's a fact that the steam coming out of the top here is actually what helps um, the fire um, keep the boiler hot because it draws it draws the heat through through the length of the uh, the body of the um, the engine um, heating the water as it goes is how they help how, how it uh, helps keep the engine running so basically the engine stopped you're almost likely never to see white smoke coming out of it because um, the the steam comes from the cylinders when the engine when the engines actually driving the wheels and if it isn't moving it's not driving the wheels. Amazing what you learn when you're researching a picture. So I'll stop that there. So there'll be some darker grey in front of it and white behind it so, uh, as, as the uh, as the light sort of creeps around the smokestack. So we're getting getting on with it. <laughs> You don't want to do any more practice there for your Reaper. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Right, let's put the dark grey in. Just to uh, do the section up here. Before we put the black in. Uh, needle threader. I'll put some lights on in a moment. It looks seems to be getting quite dark in here. Don't know. It's not yet. I don't even think it's midsummer night yet, and yet it seems to be getting darker earlier at the moment in the UK.
I think that will do for the dark grey area around there. Although I will just check what it looks like on the other side. Yeah, it looks okay. So now we... Oh, I was going to put a little bit down in here. Uh, no, what bother. I was going to put a bit down in here, but I'm not going to bother. So I'll switch to the black. Good evening, welcome to the studio tonight. And I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry to hear that, uh, Kaliati. I hope you feel better soon. Okay, now that I've got the black in here, I'm going to go around this lettering in here. Too bad. Sorry, I was. Uh... Excuse me a minute, uh, guys. Just an interruption. I'll be back shortly.
I'm back for the moment. Oops, no I'm not. I've just forgotten my glasses. So a yeah, pussycat has got where he's not supposed to be. And um, which is on is on the roof of uh, a carport and he kind of wants to get down but he kind of won't be shown the way to get down. He knows how to get down but um, he's, uh, he kind of likes it where he is at the moment so he doesn't want to. But I do, you kind sort of, what's going to happen is in a little while he'll start meowing because he thinks he can't get down. And so uh, we're just trying to get him down in a controlled fashion just then. They kind of run up a tree to get there and uh, for some reason it's, been, it's ages before they realise that having gone up the tree it means they can also get down it as well. So it sort of says something <laughs> now. This is where I've got to work out with all the curves just where the white is going to come to. And uh, I, think, I think what I'm going to do is assume that the white is going to come as far forward as this grey here. So I need to leave space for it to go in. Did you 
goes in through this window. Junior, good boy. Come on, jump in through the window. Come on, darling. Once you've learned how to do it, you can do it. Junior. Come on, love. Thank you for your vapor. So that's most of the front of the engine now, so I'm going to do some around here uh, and then there'll be white I think in there and, and light blue or this blue in, in the rest of the body here. I might just manage have enough black without having to get another reel out. On the other hand, having just said that, that guarantees I'm going to run out before I finish.
<laughs> Fluffy Twiglet says hi. <laughs> the voice says hi. <laughs> the pussy cat has come in off of the roof that it was on that he was on. So it's kind of an unusual way for the pussycat to uh, to visit the studio tonight, but through the window is as good a way as any for a cat, I suppose. Hello there. Oh well, that's what he thinks of me. As you may just have gathered, or may not, a, um, a pussycat, Junior, in fact, jumped up behind my monitor. He poked his head around the corner, took one look at me, I said hi there as you heard, he turned up, immediately turned around and has gone and sat on my computer at the end. Mind you, he, he, um, both cats like laying on top of the computer because there's a, 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 an air vent in the top, which, uh, of course, there's warm air coming out of. I don't think the fans are running, otherwise they probably wouldn't enjoy it quite so much, but um, they do like laying just on top of the air vent. Keeps the tummies warm.
<laughs> uh, no, I was, uh, I was when they want food, they come and sit by you, looking at you. And they just look at you. Um, usually they don't make much of a sound, they'll just sit there or uh, they'll sit in the most awkward place that they can find, you know, uh, right in the middle of where you're working or something like that, until, you know, the, um, the thick human uh, realises that they want some food and, and goes and feeds them. Um, they, uh, very occasionally they'll get bored with waiting and go off in, in a huff and lay somewhere else entirely. You've kind of got to ignore them for about 30 minutes for them to do that. I just had enough black. But not much. <laughs> Your cat has the same coat as, uh, as Felix. Well, uh, the... Um, We've got two which are, which look at first at first view to be similar as you you've probably um, seen both Felix and Junior. Uh, they're both sort of a d domestic short hair moggy, um, but in actual fact, Junior's black, but um, Felix is actually a really dark brown, which you only notice when the two are side by side. Um, white. Let's do the white. They have, both, both of them have quite silky coats. Well, Junior's is, uh, Junior being an outs more of an outside cat, his is a little bit more oily than, uh, than Felix's is. Felix's is, that sounds a bit of a tongue twister.
I really should do a white line over the top of the blue cab here, but I'll uh, I'll come back and do that afterwards. Because otherwise it'll involve me actually cutting the thread off and uh, wasting a little bit. <laughs> Which by now you should know. Me being a Yorkshireman, I hate wasting things. Even a little bit of thread. This white I think I'll take down below the um, the brass handrail there a little bit um, before we switch to the blue uh, for the rest of the body of the engine. So I've never never used uh, white in this way before to uh, to show a highly reflective surface. So it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like when I've uh, uh, done this section and turned it over. I'm going to uh, kind of wait until I have done this section before I turn it over. So keep you all in suspense as to what it might look like on the other side.
Ow. You know, I was just thinking that I probably need the uh, Days Without Accident counter more than um, that Danish guy does. <laughs> At least while I'm doing this. Although the needle is relatively sharp, it's, it's not sort of needle sharp. Um, it doesn't actually puncture, but it's still uncomfortable when you jab yourself with it. Good evening, Eddie Fall Guy. Welcome to the studio this evening. Um, okay, let's have a look at what the top looks like. Uh, it's not too bad. Interestingly, um, that light up there is making this bit look blue to me. Uh, at least on the OBS output window and the top bit looking white just like a reflection would do which is 
quite interesting in a way. Okay, I'm going to uh, do some white down here, roughly where that shadow is, just underneath the um, under underneath that handrail. Before we switch uh, to the to the blue. What I'm going to do is just roughly go all the way across, roughly where I want to do this and work from the bottom upwards. I'm doing very well, thank you very much, 84 guy. And how are you doing today? <laughs> well, good luck with the uh, with the chain work, Eddie.
Okay, what is it that you're going to be trying new then, Eddie? A what's a whirly bird unit? I mean, a whirly bird is slang for a helicopter, but um, I'm not quite sure that's what you meant by it. <laughs> well, it's kind of obvious when you, <laughs> when you come out with a name like that that I'm going to ask what it is. Uh, that's quite uh, quite an interesting design. Uh, reminds me of um, all-terrain tyres on um, on something like a big truck or something like that. Actually, it reminds me of all-terrain tyres on, on, on model cars and trucks, I think, more, because they, uh, they have that sort of look often.
Uh, I anything? No, the helm was the last one that I uh, I did. I finished off a, f a fairly large one. Um, made it from a bracelet into a necklace. So as a uh, as a bracelet, it, uh, it was a bit too stiff for a bracelet, but as a necklace, it's turned out really nice. Um, I don't have it on the desk at the moment, otherwise I'd uh, I'd show you. But there's uh, there's a bit of this locomotive. Not sure whether that white's a bit much on this. Let's put a bit of blue in. Just been a bit too busy just recently to try, yeah. Uh, to try any uh, any ring work for a while. I've got some in front of me on the uh, on the desk, and I've got a, at some point I need to order some more because I've uh, run out of some that I need to finish off a couple of pieces with. But you always run out with with just a few. That's what oh, that's what I seem to be doing. I just need to like you know, half a dozen rings or something like that just to finish something off and you run out just with that half a dozen missing. One, two, three, okay. <laughs> yeah, I call you saying you dodged the wrong size. I did the same thing. The um, the website that I uh, used for it, which you're familiar with, um, had I think it was I think they had some out of order, shall we say, and I think um, I hadn't noticed. I got I ended up with the wrong size. They'll always come in for something, so they're not wasted, but it was frustrating and that wasn't what I uh, thought I was getting.
look too bad. Not quite sure whether the white's a bit too much, but it's not uh, it's not too bad. So I've cut off the thread because it's now uh, just after 10 o'clock at night, so it's about time I've stopped uh, streaming for this evening. Uh, <laughs> Red Skull XBZ, welcome to the studio this evening. Unfortunately, you've just joined us. Um, I'm about to give up for this evening. I've been streaming a couple of hours now, and I could do with a with a drink and a uh, little bit of rest. My uh, left hand is beginning to ache a little bit, holding this uh, in just a little bit of an awkward position. May just have to see if I can find a slightly different position tomorrow uh, to hold it and uh, give my hand a bit of a, a rest. Thank you very much, Fear Reaper. So, um, obviously tomorrow I'm going to continue to fill in this area and, and there's an area here and then the tender itself and then once that, that area is done, which we'll easily finish tomorrow uh, we then start on the background uh, start with the rail <laughs> which of course is the, the, or the two rails, which are the important bit oh. <laughs> I think I'm missing some grey off of there. Yes, I have. And I must remember to do some grey just around that, that wheel there. Um, but then, obviously, put the rails in, and then we've... I don't know, I'll probably put this on grass like I did the other locomotive, just uh, to give them a common sort of background. We'll put some smoke in, uh, and then some sky. And hopefully I won't run out of uh, thread this time. But... Um, We'll finish the main body of the locomotive tomorrow and then work on the rest from there. So, thank you, uh, Eddie Fall Guy, uh, for that comment. Um, so, what I'm going to do is say what I always do, which is um, thank you all for watching. It has been great fun having you around while I'm doing this and seeing you, having you see what I'm doing. Uh, if there's anybody who's watching that isn't following, then I, of course, always uh, appreciate it if you would like to follow, but of course you don't have to if you don't want. If you'd just like to have uh, a notification when I go live, you're also welcome to follow me on Twitter, as I do tweet when I go live. And uh, anything else is only related to art or streaming, so you won't get to know when I have my breakfast. On the other hand, if you'd just like to catch me tomorrow night, uh, which is when my next stream is, 8pm in the UK, 1900 hours GMT, or if you look at your clock in whatever time zone you're in currently, subtract about two hours, that's roughly 8 o'clock in the UK, so that will be that time tomorrow night and subsequent nights. Thank you all for watching again, and hope to see you on a new stream. Bye-bye.